work it, make it, do it, make sense. So, uh, I have to admit that I'm a bit confused right now because, not only because I'm French and being surrounded by so many Brits, it's very unnatural for me. <laughs> but I'm a bit, yeah, um, I'm a bit confused because when the dear people of Divox invited me, they said, hey, come to Divox, it will be fun, you see. And I said, yeah, why not? But what is Divox actually? And they said, oh, you know, it's a huge conference with a lot of developers. Uh, almost all the Java developers will be here. So I was pretty happy because I like talking in small rooms in front of three or four people. And they said, well, uh, there might be a little bit more than that. And of course, I laughed because I was thinking of all the Java developers. And I said, you know, we are in 2017, so nobody does Java anymore. <laughs> And in fact, they were true, so I'm a bit confused because I have prepared a, a very good talk about all my best Java jokes, and clearly you are not ready for this. So let's talk about something else like artificial intelligence, because, well, artificial intelligence is the future. It's literally changing our lives, and, and if you take some domains like the self-driving cars, it's crazy. The thing is able to drive you from point A to point B, almost safely. And on the way, it can make the difference between the bikes, uh, the pedestrian, other vehicles, and it's crazy. If you think about it, 20 years ago, the only self-driving car you knew was the one in Knight Rider. <laughs> and we are almost there uh, with, yeah, less turbo boost and, and crazy haircuts, but we are almost there, and it's crazy. And Artificial intelligence is even changing big things like art. I don't know if you guys have seen, I've seen this painting, but it's a very interesting one because it's the last Rembrandt painting that we have with a tiny detail. It's that it has not been painted by Rembrandt. In fact, a group of researchers uh, have uh, built an artificial intelligence and fed it with all the things we knew about Rembrandt's painting. And once it got ready, they asked it to draw something nice, and boom, here is what they got. And it's crazy because it's even asking inter interesting questions like, uh, is this an original painting of Rembrandt? Or is this a copy of an original that Rembrandt has never painted? It's crazy. And the robot, can we talk about the robot? This little dude has been built to lift heavy charges and it can even avoid objects coming at high velocity. It's crazy. And we can now build robots that mimic human behavior. This one, for example, is known as the Java developer robot. <laughs> Don't laugh. At 9 in the morning, it has launched Maven, and now <laughs> it knows that the day is completely fucked up, so he has to go back home. It's crazy what we, what we can do now. And this one, this one with two wheels can go almost everywhere. And more than that, it is better at skating than you and me. And it's crazy if you think about it. But we stay humans after all. And as good humans, when we start tinkering on things and discover that they are better than us at doing some stuff, we try to remind them that life is hard. And what's better than a good kick in the face to remind you how hard life is? But don't worry, they are just machines. What could, what could go wrong in torturing, in torturing them anyway? <laughs> so, we have made a lot of progresses in various domains. And the, the good question to ask is, what about artificial intelligence in video games? And in fact, like in every other domain, we are now at the top of our game. We are Excelsior. We have done so many good things in artificial intelligence and... <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, well, maybe not the right example, but may maybe this... <laughs> no, no, if you take a newer game, something with a boss, something with an enemy, you will see how wise the decision-making is. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah, maybe we haven't done any progresses in 20 years in artificial intelligence in video games. But the good question to ask is, why is artificial intelligence in games so dumb? And it's a good question because, you know, among developers, we have a good joke when someone uh, makes a bug. 
you know, he smiles and say, you know, it's not a bug, it's a feature. And everybody laugh, and he got fired, and ev everybody <laughs> laugh even more. And, but it's interesting because in video games, it's probably the only time that this saying is true, because all you have seen previously are no bugs. The artificial intelligence has been designed like that, because it's important to, ed to understand that in video games, we are probably the only domain of all the computer science field to use artificial intelligence that, is n that uh, doesn't aim to have a perfect artificial intelligence, because we don't need a perfect artificial intelligence. We don't want one, simply because of this. Because perfect artificial intelligence is boring, really. Like, it is just here to remind us that we are just bags of meat <laughs> with very slow reflexes. And the time we need to only push a button, a perfect artificial intelligence has the time to find 250 ways to kill humanity efficiently. <laughs> we don't need that. You have to understand that if you put a perfect artificial intelligence in your game, you will uh, bring frustration to players. And it's very not good for your business. S because a frustrated player will not buy your game. He will probably say mean things about your game on the internet. And some moms will be insulted on Twitter. And no moms need to be insulted because of artificial intelligence. <laughs> and it's easy to understand that with this GIF, even if it's mesmerizing and you haven't even heard what I said <laughs> the past three minutes. But applied to video games, it, it, it looks like that. So later, miss shot, backflip, headshot. Yeah, <laughs> nobody wants to play against that because it's not even playing, it's no fun. So it leads us to the smart dumbness paradox because I have to admit that I lied to you. So remember that I'm French, so it's normal for me to, uh, to lie to you. <laughs> but uh, I lie to you because, yeah, when we work on, on competitive games like uh, a racing game or a sport game, we, try, we aim at building a perfect artificial intelligence. And we spend months, maybe years, working on that, trying to make the best AI possible. And once we get it, we smash it hard in the head just to make it dumb enough to be beatable by players. Because it's easier for us to uh, make a smart AI dumb enough to be beatable than to make a, a dumb AI look smart. And it's very peculiar, and I guess we are the only one in this industry, in the computer science field, to do that. But when we talk about artificial intelligence in game, you all think about the, the virtual player to compete against or to play with. But it's not only that. We usually use artificial intelligence to simulate normal behavior. Um, I'd like to show you a, a short video of a game nobody knows, something called GTA V, um, where um, some of the non-playable characters helped with the right simulation uh, stimulation, sorry, do incredible things. Maybe, yeah. So you have chaos with a car in fire, and the fire truck is coming and try to extinguish the fire, but you have just enough room from the, for the yellow car to go in. But now the yellow car is sprayed, and the driver takes that as an aggression, so he tries to solve the aggression. <laughs> but the firemen act like a group. So they try to solve the aggression. We have a good kick in the groin. Yeah. And once the aggression is over, maybe, <laughs> they all take their extinguisher back and finish extinguish the fire. Yeah, the good old routine. Yeah, now that the fire is over and everybody, no. <laughs> Yeah, everybody is dead. <laughs> Sorry. So everybody get back in the car and go back to the routine. And yes, it was his head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we can talk about the, the violence and, and we, we can debate about that. But it's just a video game. Uh, but what we have just watched 
is incredible. If you think about it, nobody could have predicted this. And because we use something called a behavior tree, which is a, a very simple decision-making uh, tree, um, we can have something like that with the right stimulation at the right moment with the right conditions. And it's crazy. But there are also some games using artificial intelligence differently, not as a competitive player or as um, a behavior. Some games use artificial intelligence at their very core. And I'd like to show you two small games made in France by two very uh, small teams. The first one is called Gladiabots. Um, Gladiabots, in Gladiabots, you are in charge of a group of killing machines and you have to program them and to develop their artificial intelligence to literally destroy the, your opponent's team. And it's very interesting because, you know, when you think about artificial intelligence, you think that it's complicated and you have to do a lot of math and, and, and good algorithm and big algorithm. And using behavior trees, very, simple, very simply, you just have to link boxes uh, each, uh, with, within each other you can create artificial intelligence, and once you press play, you see your little killing machine moving and do what you said, and it's very re rewarding, and really, it's literally porn for, for programmers. And it's a very good game. It's available on PC, Mac, Linux, and Android, and, and please try this, because it's crazy. Another game, Even Zero. Even Zero is a very different game, because it's a narrative game, and you end up in space, in a space station, with the sole companion you have is called Kazen, and it's, it's literally a chatbot. So you can ask everything to, to Kazen, and it will try to answer you, and sometimes it kills you. But, you know, chatbots. And I'd like to show you a very short video about even there. Uh, it's a very famous YouTuber, and please look at, at his face when he discovers how different the game is. I'm getting a lot of alien isolation vibes from this. Oh, it's very much like it. It even has the same kind of computers. Executing chargement identifying SH, Silent Hill. Please enter a new login. Can I? Yeah, and typing on keyboard is not easy for everyone, so. What's happening? <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's just telling me what the terminal is. Let's accelerate. <laughs> yeah. But you will find, maybe. Must be doing. Oh. Oh. I can actually type. Oh. Jackaboy, login input successful. Do you want to keep Jackaboy as your new login? Yes. Oh, cool. New user Jackaboy created. Yay. <laughs> Incrementing event count success. Hello. And here we are. Nice to meet you, Jackie boy. Nice to meet you too, Mr. Robot. Hey, that's a TV series. I can sense that we will become good friends, you and I. I hope so. You can talk to me in plain English, Jackie boy. I am talking to you in plain English. In plain English. Hey, Jacka boy, it's my duty to let you know how to control things around here. Okay, let me have it. Terrific. Do. do what? Wait, okay, so how do I control things? If you formulate a clear instruction, I may do it for you. Just try and you'll see. Open door. You learn fast, Jackie boy. Executing open door. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, God, is this going to get really confusing then after a while where it's like, open door, execute order 66. Um, okay, you're almost done. Success. We opened the door. It has some of the same sounds as like Bud and Mom from Grow Up. Um, uh... Where are we? 
You are in the airlock one. That's really cool. The fact that I can actually ask it questions. Because normally it's like you type out stuff and then the game just tells you stuff anyway. Um, and let's cut it here to not spoil all the fun. But the game is available on PC and Mac. And it's really cool because all he has typed in could not have been predicted. And when you will play this game, you will probably type something else. And Kaizen will always react accordingly. And again, sometimes kill you. But it's a very cool game. And I'd like to conclude with a very short story. Uh, it's a story that is known to be fake, but I chose to believe it. <laughs> because I want to believe that even dumb AI from video games can teach us humans something. And it's a story that takes place in a game called Quake 3 Arena. Uh, Quake 3 Arena is a competitive game uh, where you have to bring diplomacy using a rocket launcher <laughs> in the face of your opponent. Um, and it's a very competitive game. It has been launched in, in 99, so internet was not what it is today. Uh, so in Quake 3, you can uh, start up your own server and play with your friends. And it's the story of a guy who has played uh, Quake 3 during months with his friend and forgot that he owned this server and found it back four years later. But the beauty of Quake 3 and is that when you don't have enough uh, human player, uh, the game will spawn artificial intelligence to play against them. And four years for artificial intelligence is very long. So also, the artificial intelligence can uh, actually learn of the game. So the more they play, the better they get at killing each other. And it's the story of this guy coming four years later to see what happened. And once he logged in, all the artificial intelligence starts running in circle around him. But nobody was firing anything. And when he moved, they moved with him. But nobody was firing anything. And the moment he aimed and tried to shoot an artificial intelligence, they all replied instantly and killed him. Because they have made war so many times that they have discovered the, the best way to win war. And the best way to win war is to not participate, because, because nobody, nobody dies if nobody kills. Thank you.